what's a scary or disturbing fact that would probably keep most people awake at night? There's a type of wasp that when it stings you the best thing for you to do is to just lay down in the fetal position and just start crying, screaming because its venom is so powerful. Edit. Have been told it's the tarantula hawk wasp. Edit 2. Holy ST did not expect this to blow up. The tarantula hawk wasp. IIRC. I'd probably recommend the same advice with the gimpy gimpy plant TBH. The Elon School was open for 40 years and voluntarily closed in 2011. Nobody was arrested for creating this place. Link. If you haven't already you should Google Elon School comic. Someone who experienced it made a comic about their time there and it's very intense and super well done. Good read so far. Thanks. Just wondering how the boy was kidnapped in the first place? Or did he sign up and this was routine? The comic in question. This is more sad. Some hospitals have chilled cribs for stillborn babies. They look like normal cribs but they are cooled. It's designed for families to say goodbye before the child is taken away. Some hospitals even provide a photography service for these families. You can even donate money so more hospitals have had these cribs. It's sad that something like that needs to exist but kind for families in that situation. Every second approximately one. Eight people die. So every second one person dies and another person dies on the inside? If the Yellowstone supervolcano erupted. It would decimate most of America. It's unlikely to happen anytime soon. But it's 2020. The year of absolute FGST. So, it wouldn't surprise me at this point. Geologist here. Living in the Pacific Northwest, I am completely unconcerned about the Yellowstone volcano. People saying it's overdue don't have a complete understanding of geologic deep time. Nor how eruptions of this scale work, magma of this magnitude does not just suddenly erupt out of nowhere. We would see significant seismic activity throughout the region well before any eruption and would be well aware of any eruption probably months or years before anything happened. The thought of Yellowstone erupting is scary. Sure. But it's a meme that has survived based on the fears of laypeople who read an article or watch a YouTube video about the eruption and consider it a certainty without understanding the actual science and series of events that would lead to an eruption. Sorry. This sentence comes across as pretentious reading it back but I can't come up with a way to reword it accurately right now. I'm much more concerned with the impending megathrust earthquake occurring here than Yellowstone. Even though the megathrust will cause much more local devastation than global. The megathrust earthquakes of the region occur with far greater regularity, orders of magnitude, and will displace and kill thousands of people. Of course. This event is also misunderstood by the public, people think we are overdue because it's been 300 years since the last one. The last one occurring January 1st. 1700 based off First Nations accounts. Geologic evidence. And Japanese tsunami records. And the previous one about the same. However. The one before that was over a thousand years previously. The truth is. We can't predict earthquakes with any sort of certainty. We will likely never be able to. Unless physicists learn how friction works. We currently use a rough coefficient to measure friction. But we can't accurately measure all the microscopic components of friction. Especially on a scale of thousands of kilometers in the case of two tectonic plates meeting and subducting. Epstein named thousands of high-ranking pedophiles and the courts are not releasing the names. There is a plant called Dendrocnide moroids also known as Gimpy Gimpy or the suicide plant. It's mostly found in Australia and has little stinging hairs all over it. When touched, they inject a neurotoxin in your body which hurts so much that most people rather killed themselves than waiting the one or two days until it gets better. I have the information from another redditor on this sub. And haven't found anything that literally says, yeah they killed themselves but I do believe it's true. Anyway Ernie Ryder. 
who got hit by this plant in 1963 said. For two or three days the pain was almost unbearable. I couldn't work or sleep. Then it was pretty bad pain for another fortnight or so. The stinging persisted for two years and recurred every time I had a cold shower. Dot. There's nothing to rival it. It's ten times worse than anything else. Quote. Source. Link. I saw a show segment on these and the locals have a a cure now. They keep wax strips handy. Like for waxing your leg hair off. The strips pull the little hair like pain transmitters out of your skin. The host of the show, like an absolute idiot, touched the plant with his finger and he said the pain made him want to throw up. The wax strip made the pain manageable. I believe this is the video. If anyone's curious, the fruit is edible to humans if the stinging hairs that cover it are removed. What insane human decided to try and eat the DN plant after seeing what it's capable of? Mike Wazowski nodding would be the same as him twerking. If he grew a beard. Would it be made of facial hair or pubes? UFG monster. Delete your account. Pill bugs aren't bugs at all. Those roly polies are actually crustaceans. Tiny land lobsters. There's nothing fundamentally stopping something in your brain from breaking forever while you sleep tonight. You could be hungry forever. Lose your eyesight. Become consumed with uncontrollable rage. Whatever. All it takes is a tiny hemorrhage in the right spot responsible for regulating some signals. And they can happen to literally anyone. The serial killer Richard Chase would try random houses to break into. If the door was unlocked, he saw it as being an invitation. If it was locked, he saw it as a sign that he was unwelcome. When I was younger I was in my room one time. Home alone. I heard our front door open and someone come inside. While everyone was out. Hours later. Every comes home. I asked. No one had stopped by. It always made me very uncomfortable. I only really heard the sound of them coming in. Not leaving. I was burgled a few years ago. It was about 2 AM and I was sat at my computer wearing full headphones. And an Oculus Rift headset. Home alone. It's only when I took it all off and went to get a drink. That I saw all my downstairs doors were wide open. As well as the rear exit door. It still freaks me out to think someone could have have been stood right behind me. And I would have had no idea. One time I was hanging out with this girl I was crushing on and she wanted to go see her cousin in another part of town. Being smitten. I was like sure. Just tell me where to go. So we ended up in some ghetto part of town and within five minutes of being in the house. We hear a loud bang coming from downstairs. We run down and see that the front door is off its hinges and asked her cousin downstairs WTF happened. He nonchalantly says some guy was trying to rob the place and kick the door in. Saw the cousin sitting on the couch. And ran away. That's when I noped out of there. Kind of bizarre to think someone would do that in broad daylight on a weekend with like four cars in the driveway. There are a fair number of missing nuclear weapons. Stifling a sneeze can rupture your throat. Here. Edit. Thank you for those who pointed out that my title was a little bit misleading. You'll be fine as long you don't suppress your sneeze. Have a good day. 30% of the weight of solid feces is dead bacteria. Edit. For those of you requesting a source. Here you go. Link. Dot. I'm actually editing a book that gives a higher percentage. Which I had to fact check. I've not received a response to my author query about the discrepancy. But that's okay. I'm at the limit of my curiosity. Also in terms of source. The person below that said typically. The AS made me laugh. As did the person who responded typically. Quote. For those of you who want a percentage in liquid feces. I'm having some difficulty with the centrifuge and will get back to you. This is actually super interesting. For those unfamiliar, a hockey player named Colby Cade just passed away two days ago from a brain bleed in his sleep. 
it's horrifying that a 25-year-old in peak physical condition can go to bed and just die essentially. Especially by something so far beyond anyone's control. Totally heartbreaking series of events. Link. Law enforcement bases their methods on catching serial killers on the ones that let themselves get caught. The truly foolproof and effective ways to get away with murder are still unknown and there are probably many serial killers getting away with murder because the procedure for murder investigations has not changed much in years. Learned this one watching Mindhunter. Here's three. Goats were used as a medieval torture method. Strap someone to a chair for two days. With their feet dipped in salt water. Release a goat into the room. The goat will lick the salt of the victim's feet. And since a goat's tongue is super coarse it will strip the flesh off down to the bone. No pleading. And no mercy. The goat won't care about the screams. In very ancient times. A way of execution was to bend two palm trees together. Tie someone's ankles to them and let the palm trees go. They would immediately spring up, ripping the victim in two. It's better to pick up a human head with two hands, because it's as heavy as a bowling ball and the weight is uneven. I'm not sure about picking it up by the hair, because I'm pretty sure it would be slick with blood. I think I was reading about the Spanish Inquisition and their torture methods. One was to strap a person to a table with just their feet exposed over one edge. A small amount of coals were placed under their feet, not touching them. Their feet would basically be slow roasted and burned off while the person was still living. Did anyone else's feet start to itch after reading number one? This one's a little esoteric. But. False vacuum decay. The fundamental properties of the universe might suddenly decide to change one day. It might be an insignificant change or so great that all matter would just cease to exist. And we wouldn't see it coming until we blinked out of existence. Edit. Fixed link so it didn't point to the in fiction bit. Whoa. I didn't think that was legit at first because the part of the wiki page it brought up was how it's been used in fiction. I did a mini project on quantum tunneling a few years back. But have never heard about false vacuum decay before. Thanks for the cool read. Absolutely fascinating. And terrifying. So basically universe says FK it. New vacuum state and gravity just FG disappears. No you can't just change to a new vacuum state. Haha <laughs> electrons G. Dust mites are microscopic arachnids that live in your sheets and pillows and feeds on your dead skins. They are apparently in all homes no matter how clean. Your average person is only 9 missed meals away from becoming a violent lunatic. Think of someone you love but only see a few times a year. Now take a guess at how many years until one of you dies. How many more times in your lifetime are you going to see that person? If you moved away from your parents and only see them 3 times a year and you expect them to live another 30 years. That's less than 100 times you will ever see them again. Dude. You just wrecked me with this. I had to cancel my yearly trip to see my family because of COVID. And it's a yearly trip at best with my mom. And I've only seen my dad once in the past three years. FK everything. Pigs will eat humans if given the chance. So be wary of any man who owns a pig farm. Edit for the uninitiated. Link. Feed him to the pigs. Errol. The episode of Dexter with the killer who buries kids alive in concrete has FD me up more than once when I was trying to sleep. There's a Criminal Minds episode where a killer buries women alive in concrete inside of oil drums. You can actually wake up during surgery. But the worst part is that you are still paralyzed. So you can feel everything what they do to you but you can't signal to them that you are conscious. This is one of my worst fears. Actually if a sedative wears off but a paralytic does not the only thing you can do is cry. We were taught in school that if your sedated patient cries you done messed up and you need to resedate right away. Addition. In the context of what I was taught paralyzation there is one warning sign sedation is wearing off. 
when watching the patient's CO2 levels while they're breathing the waveform the monitor creates will get a notch on it from the patient starting to breath against the ventilations they're being given. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.